Hi there, this is Kara Tierney from Monroe Community College, and we're going to be talking about the ideal gas law in this video. An ideal gas is something that we discussed in class, and we can assume for the purposes of our class that all gases behave as ideal gases. Gases will not behave as an ideal gas when they're under a lot of pressure or if they're at especially low temperatures. So the ideal gas equation is mostly what we're going to be focusing on, and this is the ideal gas equation. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's derived from some of the gas laws that we studied previously in class. In this equation, P stands for pressure in atmospheres, V stands for volume in liters, N is moles, R is our gas constant, I'll get back to that, and T is our temperature in Kelvin. Now the reason why I have set all of these uh, units is because we are only going to be using one value for this gas constant. Now you can change around these units and your gas constant will change values. But this gas constant is good for every single gas that you can think of. And the value we're going to be using is 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. So that's why we need to make sure our pressures in atmospheres, our volume is in liters, and our temperature is in Kelvin so that our units can cancel out in the end. So let's start off with this problem. It's just a simple algebra problem, so if you think you can do it, why don't you try it now? Um, otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and solve this problem for you. So we're going to be using our ideal gas equation. And in this problem, we see that we need to determine the volume of 1.00 moles of a gas at STP. And STP is defined as standard temperature and pressure. For a gas, this is at 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere. So let's write our equation, PV equals nRT. What I like to do to start myself off is I like to write all of my variables on the side, P V N R T. This is just a way of organizing the information that has been given to me. Now we know that this is at STP and it's been given to us that STP is one atmosphere. So our pressure is one atmosphere. Our volume is what we are solving for. See, we have determined the volume, so that's what we're looking for. So I'm just going to put a question mark there. And we know that we're dealing with 1.00 moles of gas. R is going to be the same value for everything. Remember I said it's 0 0.0821 liters atmosphere over mole times Kelvin and our temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Now, you need to make sure right away that our units are going to cancel out. I see that my atmospheres will cancel out. What I'm doing is I'm comparing all of my units to the units within the R value. Uh, so I have my atmospheres and my moles, and those are going to be okay, but my Celsius is not. So in order to go from Celsius to Kelvin, we're going to add 273.15 now I see that my temperature only goes, uh, it's 0 degrees Celsius, not 0, 0.0, which means when we uh, take into consideration our significant figures, we're only going to go to the ones place. So that's why I'm going to round to 273 Kelvin. If you are puzzled by this, you can always ask me in class when we go over um, this lesson, and I can do that at that time. To solve for V, what we need to do is we need to get this V by itself in the equation. In order to do that, I'm going to divide both sides by whatever V is multiplied by in order to get it alone. So we're going to divide both sides by P so that the P cancels out. So we have V is equal to nRT over P. So I'm going to write out those values. N is 1.00 moles. R is 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres over mole Kelvin. And our T is 273 Kelvin. And we're going to be dividing by our pressure, which is 1 atmosphere. And that's exactly one atmosphere for this pressure. 
So that means when we solve this, we're going to be looking for three significant figures because that one atmosphere is exact. Now let's make sure that our units cancel out. Mole cancels out with mole. Kelvin cancels out with Kelvin. Atmosphere cancels out with atmosphere. We're left with liters. So why don't you enter that into your calculator. Make sure you get the same thing as me. I get 22.4 liters. That is the volume of one mole of gas at STP. And this is going to be a very important number for us. It's important because it has consequences. Um, because all gases behave as an ideal gas, uh, if we take a look at these three samples of three different gases, if they are all at the same pressure and temperature, and they all have one mole within them, they will all have the same volume, but different masses. So this is what we call molar volume at STP. Molar volume is the volume that one mole of the gas will take up. So at STP, our molar volume is 22.4 liters per mole. And this is really handy because it gives us a little shortcut when we're doing our problems. So I'm going to show you the shortcut in the next example. But how I remember it is, if you see STP in your problem, you do not need to use PV equals NRT. Instead, you can use this shortcut. And the shortcut is basically treating our 22.4 liters per mole as a conversion factor like a normal unit conversion. So let's take a look at what this shortcut looks like. So if you were to be given a problem like example two, to calculate the amount in moles of helium in a 45 liter tank at STP, if you see this key right here, STP, now you could solve this problem the exact way we did in the last example, or you could do this shortcut where we take our 22.4 liters per mole, and we're going to use it as a use unit conversion. And it's a little bit easier to see if we write it as a fraction. So we can write this as a fraction saying 22.4 liters over one mole. Does that look more like a unit conversion to you? I'm hoping it does. So in this problem, we're going to start off with our quantity that was given, our 45 liters of helium. And we're going to cancel out our liters of helium. We want to get to moles of helium. And we're, since it's at STP, we can use our 22.4 liters per mole. So we're going to end up dividing by 22.4 since the liters is on the bottom. Cancel out our units. And this gives us to two significant figures because of the 45 liters, 2.0 moles of helium. So what we're going to do now is we're going to incorporate this into stoichiometry. Do you remember stoichiometry? Uh, we've been doing stoichiometry where, remember, the key that I give you is when in doubt, convert to moles. So we've seen it before where we are given a quantity that's in grams. We need to get to moles to go in between grams and moles. I hope you recall that we use molar mass. Or if we had a solution and we needed to get between liters and moles, we used our molarity. Now in these problems, we're going to be just for gases, because gases, I'm going to show you right here, this is just for solutions, right there. For solutions, we're also going to go between liters and moles because we can't measure gases in grams very easily because they're not very dense. Liters are much more practical for gases. So for going between liters and moles with gases, there are two things that we're going to use. If you see that STP, that means that you're going to be using the molar volume of 22.4 liters per mole. If it's not at STP, then you're going to have to do the whole PV equals NRT equation. 
So let's see how that incorporates itself. In problem example three, we are asked how many liters of hydrogen gas measured at 748 millimeter mercury and 86 degrees Celsius are required to synthesize 0.55 moles of CH3OH according to the reaction below. So since we're asked about how many liters of H2 gas we need, that means that we're not going to be starting at the parameters that are given for hydrogen gas. We're going to use those things later. We know that we need to use the information given about the other substance first, which is the 0.55 moles of CH3OH. And we're going to use that to get to, when in doubt, convert to moles, but instead of moles of CH3OH, which is methanol, we're going to go to moles of H2 because that's what we're trying to figure things out about. So let's start at, with that and go from there. Ooh, I'm writing a little messy, sorry. So we have 0.55 moles of our CH3OH. We're going to try and get rid of that the moles, that is, of CH3OH, and we're going to go to moles of H2. This is our mole to mole ratio that we get from the equation. This is called our stoichiometric ratio, and we get this from the coefficients in the reaction. So we see that H2 has a coefficient of 2, and CH3OH has a coefficient of 1. So that means for every 2 moles of my H2 that are being put into this reaction, we're only getting 1 mole of the methanol, CH3OH, out of it. And when we multiply, looks like we have 2 sig figs, so we're going to get 1.1 moles of H2. Now our next step is to go between moles and liters of a gas, we are either going to be using our 22.4 or the PV equals NRT. Are you given STP? 748 millimeter mercury and 86 degrees Celsius are not STP, unfortunately. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using PV equals NRT. to solve for V. So let's take a look at all of our parameters as we're given. So PV and RT. So our pressure is equal to 748 millimeter mercury. Our volume, that's what we are solving for. We know that we have 1.1 moles and our R is always equal to 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere over mole K, and our temperature is 86 degrees Celsius, which right away I'm going to add 273.15 to. However, since our temperature is only given to the ones, that 0.15 isn't going to play into this too much. And we calculate a temperature in Kelvin of 359K. Now, you can either incorporate uh, your pressure unit conversion into the problem, or you can do it separately. I think I'm going to incorporate it into the problem this time since you haven't seen that before. You can convert the pressure first if you want to and that's perfectly acceptable. So in order to solve for V, we're going to have to divide both sides by P once again. And we are left with V is equal to NRT over P. Now this is going to end up being kind of long, so I'm going to write it on the bottom here. So V is equal to N, which is 1.1 moles. R is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere over mole Kelvin. And our T is 359 Kelvin. We're going to divide by our pressure. I'm just going to write it out. Even though I know it's in the wrong unit, I'm going to show you my little trick. 
So when we cancel out our moles and our kelvins, we see that atmospheres is not going to cancel out with millimeter mercury. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply this by the conversion factor right here. I'm going to cancel out my millimeter mercury and I'm going to cancel out my atmosphere. See how that's just going to cancel both of them out? I know that there are 760 millimeters for every one atmosphere. So my millimeter mercury are going to cancel out, my atmospheres are going to cancel out, and that leaves us with liters. Ran out of room here, so I'm just going to put the answer above. You should get, well, how many sig figs do we need? Moles has two sig figs, and that looks like our smallest. So we need two significant figures, and you are left with 33 liters as our answer. So this is how you use the ideal gas equation within a stoichiometry problem. We're going to be getting into other versions of the ideal gas equation in the next couple videos, so you need to make sure to watch those before class, and I'll see you there.